not everybody has something to share every week. So we say, oh, no, I'm on top of all my clients at the moment. I just wanted to say hi. And other people are like, hey, I've got this client with this going on and that going on. And these things lead to growth because it's all learning. So the Monday group is like this learning space for everybody. The connection is fantastic because we have to grow. How are we going to grow? How are you going to grow in 2024? That is your question. Here's me trying to throw all these ideas out there. But at the end of the day, it's your question for you. What growth do you envisage this year? Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, coaches, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to the needs of you, the practicing natural therapist. We have interviews during the holiday season and business and mindset support each week so you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated in your practice. Don't forget to subscribe to receive the weekly episodes And if you want to connect with me, always check the show notes because that's where you'll find the links to book appointments and, of course, to join the Academy, the membership group, where there's constant connection and community with like-minded practitioners. Now, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? So in our last podcast, the first of the year, I told you about my journey, right? I went through a number of things about my journey to getting to where I am now. But today I wanted to talk about growth through that journey because I've given you the baseline. There was lots of decision with change that meant that I ended up working within a service industry. I've ended up working with people. I've burnt out on numerous occasions trying to do too many things, and that's what happens. It just simply what happens if we don't corral our time, if we don't absolutely manage our time as to the best we can to make sure that we don't end up putting ourselves under too much pressure and not being able to cope and complete the things that we want to complete. But when we change, when things present themselves to us in the form of a course or a conference or a seminar, this change brings growth because we learn something new every time. Can't necessarily afford to do all of the things though. We do have to be picky. So I generally don't go to the seminars from the big companies that are presented by them because generally it's just a sales opportunity. They're just selling you their product. They're just standing there saying, hey, I don't know, This is PCOS, but hey, look, don't worry, we've got this product for you. And that's not really helping because we know we can do it with other things. And then we end up being a little bit reliant on these companies, which isn't good for our clients. And I'm always banging on, you know, we shouldn't be using multi-level marketing products. We shouldn't be selling them on to our clients because it's actually against the HCCC and against APRA. The reason being that you end up using that product to the exclusion of other products. Now, if you want to sell Tupperware, who cares? Some, I don't know, suitcases, nobody cares. You're only going to need one. But if you're selling product, then, or essential oils or whatever it is, you can be trying to thrust these things on people at the exclusion of all else. So we do have to think about what is this product And what does it represent? And so what does the seminar, what does that evening seminar with dinner represent to me? Sometimes I'll go along simply to meet people, to do the socializing part. And when I do that, because I'll see some friends there, we end up having meme wars and things because it's just a sales event. So recognizing the difference between a sales event and a true growth event is something we need to do prior to getting there. When we physically move, it changes how we feel for the day. It changes our mental scape going out for a walk in the morning. We tell our clients, don't we? We say, you know, you need to walk, you need to exercise. If you can't get out your house, you need to walk up and down the hallway of your house and those sorts of things. Because movement brings that mental growth, that physical movement helps us move our brains. And travel can be part of that as well. And when we travel and exercise, meditate, journal, these things will all help us to advance ourselves, to move ourselves forward because change brings growth. Movement brings growth. Learning 
brings growth. So when we're working with people in various groups and in various places, that will help us grow as well. So connecting. So I did talk last time a lot about connecting and how we can connect. So I started a group here in Adelaide and I was running the local chapter. And it's important that you join physical groups where you can. But often we need a pinch of salt. I would go along and I would be, people would be telling me something and I'd be looking at them going, are you for real? Now, I'm not going to say that to their face. I'm just going to take away their information and look at it in a brighter light, perhaps in a light that isn't clouded with the other people in the space with me or in the room. We need to keep these connections going and connection can be hard. But I think it's always been hard for us as a group, for us as natural therapists, because we're already often sidelined anyway with what we've got to say. And a number of us very determined with what we've got to say. And that can overshadow those of us who just want to get on with it, who know what they want and just get on with it. We don't on social media see the people who are busy all the time because they're busy all the time. They haven't got time for social media. They don't care about social media and they are connectors in other ways. Remember last time I talked about doing the Gallup test. It's worth doing to find out what your positives are, what your negatives are, what your strengths, you know, the strengths test it's called because then we can see our strengths and work with our strengths. We can enhance what we do. That's free. You can pay for the printed copy, I think, or like the download, but you can do it for free. You can do the whole thing for free. So think about doing something like that. Who introduced me to it? Uh, Murray Guest introduced me to it. So it's a really cool way of looking. Once we know our strengths, working towards them and what we can change about ourselves to enhance them. And when I say change about ourselves to enhance them, I don't mean getting purple hair like I have. I mean changing the way you sit at your desk. It might be that your connection and communication is something that's really hard for you and you have put a lot of barriers between you and your clients when they see you. So maybe reducing those barriers by getting a round table. Do you see what I mean? And little changes can enhance some of those things that we're not good at without us doing anything, without too many difficulties within that system. Okay. Over the years, I've found that clients actually like telephone calls. Now, we're in a new age where we can text our clients and texting is fine as well. And so you can ask when you see them, you know, do you mind if I text you? Do you mind if I ring you? Some of my older clients much prefer their consultations. They hate Zoom. They don't feel confident with it, even though they used it all through COVID, but they'll go on the telephone with you. All right, so you can chat with them on the phone. You can speak with them because you've already met them. So there's no reason why you can't have a telephone conversation with them as your connection with them progresses. You need to see people once a year in person, like physically, so you know that they really are who they are and they look as they do. But you can do that physical look also now online because we've got all the Zoom connections or these other similar connections. Sorry, I just diverged there, didn't I? I thought, oh, just better put in the rules there, just quickly slip them in under the carpet. Because what we're talking about today is growth and how we can grow through connection, how we can grow through learning, and how we can grow through our everyday activities. And these things can be free. So some of the, yet another email from one of the companies, really going to have to unsubscribe. Daily emails is just too much for me. I send out my, generally send out my weekly email. And how often are you emailing your clients? How often are you connecting with your clients or with the people you want to be your clients? So all of these things can be difficult for us and yet are part of that growth change. I never, 10, 15 years ago, I think, I got my children, who were children then and now adults, to put all of my clients' emails on an email provider. And it meant that I could email my clients. And then tons of them unsubscribed. Rightly, who cares? Like I haven't seen them and I had hundreds of clients went on, but I wouldn't have seen some of these people in five, six years. So of course they unsubscribed. And one thing about connection is accepting those unsubscribes and being cool with them. Because especially if someone connects with you in a different space. So I've got the Facebook groups and I'm emailing and it might be that you love Facebook. You're not so keen on email, you unsubscribe. Or it might be you love the email, but you're not in the group 
and you're not following the group. So you don't see me there. So you need the email to know, hey, she's done a live. That's what the email is. It generally is, here's the latest live that I've done. Here's what's going on in the groups. Oh, and by the way, this is what you can get from me if you happen to want to buy something. Or here's the freebie or whatever it is. I sent out a freebie in their emails. Oh, I should send that out again, probably. I'll send it out there. Since we're at the beginning of the year, that's probably a really good idea. A what are called a big calendar with all of the dates for all of the year on it, so that you can really plot a planner, a year planner. I created a year planner that you can download and use, so that you know what's going on for yourself. You can plot your times. You can do what I've already done. So I did in September, October, maybe even sooner. I'd already blocked out my holidays and when things are for 2024 so that I know when I can launch because I mean the graduate program is being launched again like right now and so it's really important that I have that in my calendar it's an immersion it's very different to what it used to be you just get tons of time with me now and you still get all of those background recordings and we have three months of connection sort of more intense connection than we have in the past and it seems to be working So you can take the connection or not. It's entirely up to you. I've got people from the last group who didn't take the connection at all. And that's totally fine because it's all email. There's no messenger group with the immersion because there can't really be. But you have the Mondays and it's it's good. It's good watching like the, the new graduates or people with lacking confidence or low client numbers. They're listening to these people who have been in their place. Not everybody has something to share every week. So we say, oh, no, I'm on top of all my clients at the moment. I just wanted to say hi. And other people are like, hey, I've got this client with this going on and that going on. And these things lead to growth because it's all learning. So the Monday group is like this learning space for everybody. The connection is fantastic because we have to grow. How are we going to grow? How are you going to grow in 2024? That is your question. Here's me trying to throw all these ideas out there. But at the end of the day, it's your question for you. What growth do you envisage this year? What growth do you see for yourself within your business or outside of your business do you envisage for 2024? How are you going to fit it in for 2024? And what support do you need in 2024 to achieve this growth? What planned actions are there out there? The companies. I'm not touting it, but Integria does their two-day online or in-person symposium, which for the last few years I've found to be very good. The I don't know if I'm going to this one this year's one or not. I've got a funny feeling that I've purchased it, but I might be overseas. So there we go. Them's the breaks. But when we think that's growth in an area because it's learning, but what about growth in areas where we will learn, but we can do it for free? This podcast. You're doing it for free. There's other podcasts. Other people have created podcasts as well. There are journals. There is just getting online and Googling it. But there's connection. And you must not forget that connection. How are you getting your connection in 2024 as well? So we've got lots of questions there. I really want to quit you to question yourself. We're at the start of the year. How is your connection going to happen? How is this growth going to happen for you? Where are you putting your best foot forward. And I've left it till now in January because I think it's important that we're not just going, it's not a December thing or a January 1st thing that I'm going to have all of these New Year's resolutions. Oh, one week later, they've crashed and burned. Hopefully you're through the crash and burn of your of your resolutions. And now reality is there a bit more and you're able to go, yeah, well, losing 200 kilos in two days wasn't realistic and I'm now going to look at really realistic things that I can do in my business to support myself and support my growth and my learning and I'm going to do it in a systematic way that isn't going to cost the earth and I'm going to get the support that I need from the right people in the right place. You might have to sit down and write yourself a little list of all the people and all the places and then make sure that you have the connection all set up, you know, the Facebook groups, you actually press follow on those Facebook groups, like Strictly Education and Support and Strictly Practitioners, so that you've got that connection, so that you get notifications from the groups that really matter, that are your learning space. Okay. 
So I'm going to leave it there for today because um, over the next few weeks, I've got Brad McEwen coming in and we're going to have some amazing conversations all lined up for you. So I can't wait for that to happen. So have a really good think, maybe pen and paper so that you can journal it out. I'm not a big one on journaling, but I don't think when I do journal, I don't think it has to be done first thing in the morning. I think it can be done whenever your brain is in that space. So if your brain is in that space, now that we've had this conversation, then sit down and journaling can be dot point. And it can be in shorthand. Do it. Just make some of those plans and carve out some time for yourself, for your family and for your business in your diary. So let's leave it there. Have a good one. And I look forward to catching up with you in the next few with Brad. See you soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.